I think it's the most played ensemble piece in the concert percussion world. It is, of course, Catching Shadows. Oh, the guy on the right is going really quick. Like, we know your ladder is a good man, but just chill. <laughs> oh, look at that. Oh. Like, there's no sound, there's no. There's nothing. <laughs> Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another episode of This Studio. My name is Adam, and it's time for yet another episode of Let's Watch. Thank you so much to my studio VIPs, Robert Utomo, Will Flinner, Bradley Crowley, Ryan Carlisle, Sunction Han, Greg Harris, Dom's Dominic Chung, Dean P. Newberger, Scott Rader, and Marimba Maurice. Thank you so much for joining the Studio VIP team. And today's featured studio artist is Ruski. Thank you so much for joining the Studio Artist team. And if you'd like to become a Studio VIP or a Studio Artist, you can go to patreon.com forward slash Adam Tan, or you can click over here. Welcome back to the show once again. I hope you've been well. Happy Chinese New Year or Lunar New Year if you celebrate it. If not, well, I hope you're enjoying the rest of the holidays. And before I get into today's Let's Watch, there's a few things I wanna talk about real quick. Firstly, I've got a brand new merch collection. Yes, I've finally revamped the merch collection for 2020. We have some of the old pieces, including the Studio Family hoodie from 2017, as well as the box logos. But we also have now this brand new staff shirt, which I think is kind of funny, as well as a brand new Studio Family hoodie as well as a brand new Marim Beast t-shirt. These are just three brand new designs that I've just released and there's even a brand new URL. Yes, everything is changing. It's at adamtanpercussion.com forward slash merch. <laughs> yes, if you'd like to cop this merch, head over to there and check it out. And just one more thing. Yes, it is 2020 right now, which means it's getting very close to Marimba Fest 2020, which is happening on the 3rd of July, 2020 to the 9th of July, 2020. It's a six day event, Marimba Festival and competition happening right here in my hometown of Perth, Western Australia. Early bird registrations are now open. You can get a $50 discount if you sign up before 1st of March, 2020. So there's just one more month to go until the early bird discount finishes. So don't be too late. But yes, this is a really good opportunity to learn firsthand from some of the best educators in the world, including Dr. Lynn Vartan, Dr. Wei Chen Lin, Kana Omori, Dr. Matthew Lau, Robert Utomo, and also Therese. Yes, there's a whole bunch of awesome people coming to this festival. I think it's gonna be a lot of fun. So yes, if you're interested in participating, head over to marimbafest.com. There's more information over there and register right now. I can't wait to see you there. Okay, so anyway, back to Let's Watch. And in today's Let's Watch, we're going to watch some percussion ensemble music, namely a sextet and a duo. Now the first sextet we're going to listen to is probably one of the most well-known pieces in the world. I think it's the most played ensemble piece in the concert production world. It is, of course, Catching Shadows. So this video was submitted by Alex Watkins and it is Catching Shadows performed by Wesleyan School. Wesleyan School. And he says, Hey Adam, my name is Alex. I just found your channel today and love your Let's Watch series. This was a piece that my high school percussion ensemble performed for an assembly and it's one of my favorites that we have done. I am the Cajon player on the right. I know I looked down a lot in the video. I'm just trying to pay attention counting wise. I was also a bit nervous, lol. I love your content and keep it up the good work. Thank you so much, Alex, for the support. I just have to say that my cajon playing is absolutely terrible. So I'm sure you're gonna be better than me. <laughs> okay, so here's the video and we can see that it is the sextet arrangement of Catching Shadows. We have six players. We have the two marimbas on the outside, we have the two vibes in the center, and we have the two cajons, including Alex, I'm guessing is the guy with the glasses. He is on this very interesting shaped cajon. It looks like a U-shaped cajon. That's really interesting. Now, most people would have heard of this piece before, Catching Shadows by Ivan Trevenia. It's a very, very common piece, and I've heard it played many, many times. I've seen it live about 12 times now. And if you've ever played Ivan's music, you'll know that a lot of his earlier music has a lot of this rock and punk sort of influence. And you get this really like doom, 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 sort of feeling with Catching Shadows. So it'll be interesting to see how that groove is portrayed in this sextet performance. Very steady, good accents. Oh. <laughs> I always think that this part always has the most pressure because 
if, if he doesn't get the groove right at the start, it's hard for the second person to come in. Yeah, the groove is sitting pretty well. Uh, 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 okay. I think why it sounds weird is because the hall is really echoey. The gym is super echoey. Okay, now it's sitting. Oh, oh, it's rushing a little bit, but not bad, not bad. But the tempo is getting super fast. It wasn't this fast at the start. I feel like the vibes people could have their stands a bit lower. Nice entry. Because you can't really see the vibes very clearly. But anyway, we'll talk about that later. Here we go. Ah. Okay, so Alex on the Cajon actually sounds totally fine. He's a little bit ahead on the beat, but still, still okay. getting really quick. <laughs> Careful! Oh, okay. Interesting chords there. The guy on the right is going really quick. Like, we know your ladder is a good man, but just chill. <laughs> okay, this bit's pretty together. Nice. Oh. Oh, okay, so they didn't play the whole thing. <laughs> okay, so actually I didn't realize that this was a three minute video. It's not actually the full thing. They just played up to the A section, which is totally fine. There's a few things we can talk about in this video, but overall the performance started off pretty good. It was very confident, very clear. Most of the accuracy is there. Now when the parts started getting added in one by one, it started to get faster and faster. And it started off with the guy on the left who was doing the off rhythm to the guy on the right. The guy on the right was steady at the beginning and then the guy on the left started to go a bit faster and a bit faster and it wasn't quite locking together. And then when the vibes came in... It started to go a little bit faster than that. And then Alex came in with his U-shaped cajon, which was pretty okay, pretty steady. But still felt like it was on the front of the beat. Still felt like it wanted to go faster. And then that hi-hat came in. And then it just went super, super fast. Now Catching Shadows is a piece that a lot of people tend to play ahead of the beat because there's a lot of patterns, a lot of simple patterns that are mostly like semi-quavers. So 16th notes. <laughs> and there's a lot of this feeling where it just feels like you can play these parts pretty easily, pretty comfortably, like they're not particularly difficult. And then once you get to the next part, just change to the next pattern. Now that kind of approach would have been fine if this was the duo version because the players will be close together and they can sort of feel each other's groove even if they're not looking directly, even if they're not doing any sort of communication. You can sort of feel it if you've been playing with each other for long enough. But this is the sextet version. And as you can see in this video, the two players on the outside the marimba parts have to lock in with each other but they are so far away from each other which 
sometimes cannot be avoided. Like that's fine, given that this is played in such a big room where you can hear a lot of echoing. And I think those are synthetic instruments as well. So you're getting a lot of bar ring and it's sort of just mushing it all up. It makes it very difficult to follow based on sound alone. I believe the easiest way to improve this performance is for all the performers in this video to look at each other. I've seen very successful sextet performances where all the parts are memorized and they are able to look at each other and constantly keep the beat with their heads, with their bodies, with their feet, so that everyone knows where the beat is sitting. Of course, I also acknowledge that this is an excerpt performance, which means they probably haven't had that much time to learn this piece. So if they spent more time playing with each other and perhaps playing the whole arrangement, I think it would be really, really good because clearly everyone in this group is a good player. Like they're all technically really skilled and they all practiced really well. They just need to play more with each other. But otherwise, a really cool video to start off today's episode. Thank you so much, Alex, for submitting that. Let's move on to the next one. Okay, so the next video we're going to watch is submitted by Elias Gustafsson, and it is a marimba duo called Lemuria, The Fallen Civilization. Yes, this is a piece that I'm very familiar with. I played it two years ago, the solo version. It's very, very hard and very, very exciting sounding and I can't wait to hear the duo version. Never actually heard it before. Elias says, we live recorded no edits this in November. So it has a few rough patches. Give us your thoughts. Honestly, respect for recording a non-edited video of this performance. It's basically going to be a live performance, which I really enjoy. So let's watch. Okay, so in this video, we have the two marimbas. Well, we can see them very, very clearly. And we can see on the left, we have Elias. I think that's Elias with the ponytail. And we have on the right, his name is Rasmus. And they are based in Denmark and Sweden. Yeah, it looks like they're playing with Resta J Mel. It's, it looks like maybe uh, John Joffrey, Sejourné maybe. And then the right hand side is a Marimba 1, and the left hand side is a Massa M500 by the looks of that little badge in the corner. Yeah, I'm really excited because this video is not edited and there's no sheet music on display. So let's watch. Ah, I remember this piece. It's such a good piece. <laughs> that fake lift. Wow, really nice rolls, like good variation in roll speed. And notice how he's moving, he's moving on different spots of the bar. Probably could vary the roll speed even more, but but still really good. Oh no, no, he's doing it now. Okay, good, good, good. Ah, false lift. <laughs> Man, I miss I miss this piece so much. <laughs> Listen to that dynamic contrast. Oh, that one headed roll. Woo. <laughs> that glass is fixed. He's like, yeah. Man, that drop, that drop. Oh yeah. And their four day pianos are so good. So good. That part I could never get accurate when I played the solo. <laughs> Wow, so, so together. And their roll quality is so good. Like the guy on the right, really nice soft rolls. <laughs> he really likes his false lifts though. <laughs> I like the floaty strokes. And see how these delicate sections 
feel really nice and measured. Oh, they are so together. Nice. Nice little roll. You see how he's rolling towards the edge of the bar and bringing it closer to the middle? That's such a good technique. Look at that. A lot of attention to detail. Oh man, so together. I know for a fact all these runs are really stretchy and hard. Oh, look at that. Oh. Look at those two, three, fours. Man, the accuracy is on point. They're so good at the, oh, the dynamics are so good. Ah, don't do the false lift, man. Don't do the false lift. That was good. This part is so hard. <laughs> I like that they struggled a little bit too with that part. That part is ridiculous. So good. I see the guy on the left, he's very careful with his moves. He still did a false lift, but still. <laughs> Perhaps could be a little bit more variation in the roll speed. It's a little bit digga 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 at the moment. Or maybe using more of the tips of the mallets, maybe, maybe if they tilt it up. So it sounds very attacky for this section. That's good fade though. They're rolling on such... Uh, oh, <laughs> They're rolling on all the nice parts of the bar. I love that. So, slower roll speed here maybe. It's all, it's all a little bit fast. Slower, 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 slower. Yeah, nice. Yeah. yeah. This is the last bit, right? It is getting very, very articulate and loud here. I think maybe it's the wrong feel. Yeah. And hold it, hold it, hold it. Yeah, nice. Good ending. Good, good. That's awesome. So the thing with Lemuria is that it's super dramatic. There's a lot of forte pianos, just like a lot of Marjan's music, like Niflheim as well. You get a lot of these sudden drops and sudden peaks. That come out of nowhere. It's really, really fascinating stuff. I encourage you to check out his music as well. You can get his music on Edition Spitzer. But yeah, I think these guys did an absolutely fantastic job. Like the energy levels are definitely there. You can hear in the fast and loud sections, they are absolutely nailing it with the energy. I think the only thing they need to work on is just small details. And the small details come mostly from the chorale section and the fake lifts. Okay, so with chorales, I think it's really important to vary the roll speed. It's just like when you're playing any instrument that has vibrato, tremolo, that sort of stuff. Rolling on marimba is the same thing. You can't just roll at the same speed. And at the beginning, we did see some roll variation. But towards the end there, when we had some of the softer rolls, it still sounded very like digga 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 digga.
and you lose that kind of warm, soft, round, rolly sound that you can get from marimbas. So they obviously have to use only one set of marimba mallets for this whole piece. When I played Lemuria, I changed mallets towards the end because I really wanted to get something softer. But if they have to stick with these mallets, then of course, like I said in the video, they can tilt the mallet heads upwards so that you get the edge of the mallet and not so much of an articulate sort of core sound. Because right now it's pretty good, but I think it could be even better. And the second thing, fake lifts. Now, if you've ever watched any of my Let's Watch videos, you'll know that I always call out fake lifts, which are basically this knee jerk reaction. Really nice soft rolls. <laughs> he really likes his false lifts though. <laughs> that a lot of mallet players have when they play marimba. They do this thing where they just lift the mallets instinctively for no reason whatsoever. Like there's no sound, there's no, there's nothing. <laughs> and the irony is that a lot of people think that these fake lifts don't matter, but then when they end the piece, they like to do this nice, big, beautiful, grandiose gesture to signify the sound traveling away. Just like in this video, you see how they ended together? Nice and smooth and sing, and it looks beautiful. Which brings me to the grand scheme of this point, which is the idea of mallet gesture. And it's not something that you necessarily have to choreograph or like plan beforehand, but rather just think about the effects of these gestures in relation to the sound. For example, if the sound is supposed to be light and springy, then yes, some of those really knee-jerk type movements would be quite appropriate. Like it would look really cool if you pulled the sound out of the bar. If you have sounds that are supposed to be really soft or really small, this totally doesn't match. So don't do that. Maybe something that's just a little bit more relaxed. Relax the whole hand and the mallet looks relaxed and it looks really natural to the audience. There are so many papers and academic articles published on things like percussive notes and other research journals that talk about mallet gesture and how important it is for us to see marimba sound. Try to avoid fake lifts. But other than these two small points, which I'm sure these guys can fix really, really easily given that they play so well together. Like they definitely have a synergy with their playing style. I really love it so much. So make sure you go check them out, Concussion Duo. Thank you so much for submitting this, Elias. I really appreciate the video so much. I really love this piece too. Hopefully it inspires me to pick it up again at some point. But yeah, that is Let's Watch for today. If you enjoyed the video, please give me a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it. And please leave a comment down below on what you thought of today's performances. If you thought any of them stood out, let me know, because I'd love to hear from you. And if you haven't already, please hit that red subscribe button below to keep up my uploads. I upload new content on this channel every single week about all kinds of percussion stuff, including stuff like Let's Watch, but also tutorials and technique talks, like the previous one was about achieving octaves, getting stronger octaves. I like to talk about all kinds of random percussion stuff on this show. And also we will receive some instruments in the mail very, very soon. Make sure you hit that subscribe button below if you haven't already. And of course, if you want to submit anything to this segment, you can go to adamshandpercussion.com forward slash submit. Yes, I would like to see more concert percussion submissions if possible, because we have a whole bunch of marching related submissions, both DCI and WGI in the mailbox right now. So I have heaps of them to go through. That's totally fine. But we don't have that many concert submissions left. Once again, if you want to check out the merch and if you want to check out Marimba Fest, all those links are in the description below. But thank you so much for watching today's video. I really appreciate the support once again. And I'll see you guys next week for another episode of The Studio. Good night. I finally stopped running now With you I found my peace somehow let go of every thought that was holding me back yeah. I'm in love with you in every way That joy you give me every day